Hi. First, let me apologize for my voice and possible coughing um, during this video. I tested positive for COVID a couple of days ago, but I wanted to go ahead and get these videos made. So where they were out available um, before the, the first day of classes. So I am your instructor for CIT 161, the Cisco One Introduction to Networks class. Um, the two sections I'm teaching, 19Z1 and 19Z2, have been merged into one Blackboard shell. So this applies to uh, both sections. Again, I my name is Wayne Beach. I'm your instructor. I am a full-time um, employee at the University of Kentucky, but I've been an adjunct faculty member for LCC, which was the predecessor to BCTC and now BCTC since the spring 1999 semester. So I've been doing this for over 20 years. Um, the phone number listed here is my phone number at UK, um, but I work 100% remote. Uh, that phone number still exists and we're forward to my laptop here at home. Um, so that's how you can contact me via phone if you need to. Um, I don't have an office. Um, there are mailboxes in NCB 213 suite where the other CIT and CS faculty are. Um, but I haven't had a need to pass something to a student or have student get me something via the mailbox in years. Um, since I don't have an office, I don't have office hours, uh, but if we need to talk, we'll do that by appointment. Uh, we will schedule a time um, over Teams or email, and then we will meet um, using Teams if we need to. My preferred um, mode of communication, if possible, is via email to wayne.beach at kctcs.edu. I'm always checking my emails and I kind of pride myself on uh, amazing my students sometimes how fast I respond. Um, but, you know, you will get a quick response um, if you send me email. Um, all syllabus have to have the division coordinators and assistant deans for the department you're teaching in. For CIT slash CS, these are the people, their names, their email address, and their office locations, and their phone numbers. Um, I find that most of the time the students don't need to know that, but if you do need that information, there it is. Um, as far as accommodations in the classroom, there may be accommodations that need to be made for specific students for them to be successful in the classroom. Those are not worked out with me, the instructor. They're worked out with the Student Accessibility Services Office. Basically, you talk to them. If it's determined that you do need some type of accommodation in the classroom, I will receive a formal letter from them. Um, it identifies the student and what accommodations need to be made and then I will make those accommodations uh, for the, the specified student. And here's contact information for getting in touch with the SAS office. General BCTC information uh, websites. Um, here's the main website, Blackboard, MyPath, and Student Handbook. So if you need to read any of those or refresh your memory or look something up there's links to those i'm not going to read the syllabus to you line by line uh, but here i want to point out that this is the official course description uh, for cisco one um, and it is four credit hours because it is considered to have three hours of lecture and one hour of lab uh, prerequisites for this class 
is you have to have completed CIT 105 and uh, Math 65. Um, as a prerequisite or our co-requisite, that means 111 can be taken the same time as 161. But you have to be in 161. And I've had students sign up for 111 and 161 and then drop 111. And um, the department's actually gone back and said, oh, well, you dropped 111, so now we're going to force you to drop uh, 161. So people do check the prerequisites and co-requisites. Um, as far as course competencies, um, if you participate in the class, you do your assignments, you do good on the Cisco exams, you do good on the homeworks and midterm and successfully can pass the class. This is the list of things that you should be able to explain and or do related to 161. Okay. Um, for online courses or courses that have any online component you're going to need regular consistent access to a computer a webcam a microphone and high-speed internet uh, mobile devices such as cell phones are not sufficient um, for all the components of this course and in this course because of packet tracer which i'll mention here in a second um, chromebooks um, last time i checked packet tracer would not run on them so Chromebooks are not going to be a good solution for you. Uh, BCTC does have a loaner laptop program so that if you don't have a laptop or maybe the only laptop you have is a Chromebook, you can check into that and see if you can get a laptop loan that will allow you to do the work in the class. Or you can always go to an open lab or a friend's computer. Uh, for this course, you need a machine that is capable of running Packet Tracer. We will run Packet Tracer constantly, so you can't get away with not having it. Um, you will have a Blackboard account, and you will need to check it daily uh, for assignments and announcements. You also have a KCTCS email address that you need to check frequently, probably daily, for announcements from me and other instructors. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> there is no official required textbook for this course because all of your course material is going to be available through netacad.com. So, basically, <clears throat> the material in the curriculum for your Netacad course will be the textbook. If you prefer or need a physical copy of the textbook, here's information on person purchasing the companion guide, and it is a basically as much a duplicate um, to the material in Netacad as it can be. You know, a physical book can't show you animations, so they might have to explain graphics more, but it basically is a copy of the curriculum. So you're not required to buy a physical textbook, but some people prefer them. If that's you, there's the information on purchasing it. As far as attendance and participation, the way you show attendance and participation is logging into Blackboard daily, checking for announcements and assignments, checking your email for announcements or other information from me, and completing assignments and turning them in by the due date um, will show your participation in the class. Online classes have something called an attendance verification activity. <coughs> it 
back when all classes were in person, the no-show rule was basically if the student did not attend one of the first two class meetings, then you drop them as a no-show. Um, with online classes, we have to give you an attendance verification, which for my class is something called Homework Zero, and it basically states that you've read the syllabus, understand it, and don't have any questions. And that has to be completed by its due date, which is January 17th. If you do not complete this assignment by January 17th, you will be dropped as a no-show from the course. And once you're marked as a no-show, you're no longer eligible to continue working in the class. Uh, you will be dropped and people that are dropped for no-shows are also not eligible to re-enroll in the class that semester. You will have to wait till the next semester. Um, my email policy basically has to do with email etiquette, if you will, um, and that is any email you send, whether it be personal, work-related, or school-related, should have a meaningful subject. Something, sending an email that simply says help is not a helpful or meaningful subject. So your emails to me about 161 need to have CIT 161 in the subject and then a meaningful subject after that. For example, CIT 161, problem with packet tracer activity 2.3.4. I know you're in one of my 161 classes and I know what assignment you're working on and I know when that assignment's due, and then I can read the email to fill in exactly what your problem is you're having with that packet tracer activity. Uh, one thing I put in bold, and no matter how often I do this, I have one or two students that forget or disregard this, is do not use the Blackboard messaging system. Um, I do not get a timely notification that a message has been sent to me and on top of that it is addressed in such a way that I cannot reply to it. So sometimes I waste my time not thinking and trying to reply to it. Then I have to go to my email client, look up the student's email address and then um, you know respond to that message. Um, so do not do that and expect a timely response because of the way it works. Um, I think I mentioned earlier that assignments are due by the end of the date. They are assigned or listed as due, which for me is 11.59 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. If you're a student in Owensboro, for example, then you're in the central time zone and your assignments will be due by 11.59 p.m. Uh, so just keep that in mind. Sometimes I have students in Western Kentucky that that applies to, and sometimes I have students that are located out of state that that might apply to. Okay, academic integrity policy. Uh, this first part has been there <coughs> for a long time. It's basically saying all work that you turn in is should solely be the result of your own work. Uh, you know, using tutoring and that type of thing is encouraged, but not to the point that somebody else or some group of people is helping you complete the assignment. So it should be done solely by you, the student. Uh, you know, they added this second paragraph. Um, you know, I, I find it personally kind of humorous that they they used to call it plagiarism and cheating, but then the politically correct term became academic integrity violation. But when they added this in right here together, they have dishonesty, cheating, you know, all the words they were, plagiarism may be in here, all the words they were trying to avoid saying. Um, but basically, AI in the last year has become very popular. Um, you know, using things like ChatGPT to complete your homeworks is not acceptable. That's not your work, your thoughts. 
that's somebody else's and the AI's response. And it's usually pretty obvious when you do that. I had a student last semester who didn't even take the time to think about the answer they were submitting. <clears throat> and they typed my question in verbatim, which was, open the command prompt on your machine, issue this net stat command, and then answer these questions about your output. So they typed that into chat GPT, and the AI told them, I'm sorry, I can't open a command prompt on you. I, I can't issue this command on your machine. What you need to do is open a command prompt on your machine and issue this command, which was a big part of what the question originally was. But they just copy and pasted that to me. And I restrained my sarcastic self, which was to send this back to the student and say, well, every other student was able to open a command prompt on my machine and submit this assignment um, correctly. I don't understand why you couldn't open a command prompt on my machine. They didn't think that it was the AI telling them that the AI could not open a command prompt on their machine. Um, and they just blindly pasted that. So, but instead, I sent them an email and said, you know, obviously you're using AI to complete your homework assignment. This isn't appropriate, blah, blah, blah. Here's the consequences if it continues. So, the work should be your own. Uh, recording class sessions, this won't apply to us, but I kept it in there for consistency and in case you might have another class that this applies to. BCTC has always encouraged diversity and inequality. Um, they made it official by endorsing um, this statement in March of um, 2017. Um, but basically, it talks about the inclusive culture and participation and inclusiveness in all things related to BCTC and your courses. A couple of years ago, they had us go back and add this breakdown of course components, which are things that you will be doing in the course um, for a grade and a brief um, description. So this is the list for 161. You will have a lot of assignments referred to as homeworks. Homeworks will be assignments that I create. You will have packet tracer activities. There will be a lot of these. They come um, from the NetACAD um, curriculum, which you'll get into really quick. Your homework one is completing your enrollment process to gain access to the course materials in NetACAD. And early on, one of the assignments will be to install packet tracer and start using it. So you will have packet tracer activities. Um, labs are things that if this was an in-person class, we would do in the classroom on physical equipment. But in the online um, environment, they will come from your curriculum. They will be labeled labs. And they will often be completed using your personal computer at home or um, the web or something that we'll talk about later called the net lab which is a simulated classroom environment. Um, you will have module group exams. Uh, basically, they're multi-module quizzes over two or more modules from your curriculum. I think the first one is over modules one, two, and three, um, and then maybe four, five, and six. Um, but they will be in your curriculum. Your curriculum is broken down based on these related modules and you will take these as we cover the modules that these group exams uh, cover. Uh, so it'll be a little bit I think before you see a module group exam but uh, there will be like six or seven of them over the course of the semester. Um, as far as official exams you will have your midterm exam which will be made by me and administer to you via Blackboard. And then the final exam is made by Cisco and it will be administered via 
uh, netacad.com. These will be proctored um, using Respondus, which is discussed below. Um, there is also something called a practice final that gives you insight of what your final will be like. And the grade you get on that practice final will be averaged in with your module group exams. Respondus is software that KCTCS bought back during the COVID times to deal with the pro testing centers being closed. Um, you will need a high-speed internet connection. You will have to have the Respondus browser installed on your computer. And you have to have a properly working webcam and microphone. Um, we will do the install and a test of the Respondus browser so that you can install it on your computer. Make sure you're successful in doing that. Making sure you know how it works and what to expect when you get around a couple of weeks later to actually taking your midterm exam using Respondus. Um, as far as course grades, um, a year or two ago they started doing official midterm grades that we post in PeopleSoft. Uh, basically, um, it's March 4th this year is the midterm date. On that date, I have to say, if I were to give this student a grade in the class today, this is the grade they would get. Uh, and that lets the students kind of know how they're progressing through the class and whether they're on track or whether they need to improve their performance in the class to improve their grade by the end of the semester. Um, and then there will be final grades posted after finals week um, in PeopleSoft as well. As far as the grading weight or of these assignments, your Cisco online module group exams and your practice final, those scores will be averaged together and make up 40% of your final grade. Um, your online multiple choice final exam uh, which will be administered through NATICAD is 20% of your grade. Your midterm exam is 20% of your grade. And then all those homeworks, labs, and packet actri to tracer activities will be averaged together and they will be 20% um, of your grade. Once I apply that to your grades, um, I use a traditional grading scale of 90 to 100 as A, 80 to 89 as a B, etc. As far as late work, um, when I specify a due date, um, I expect things to be turned in by the end of the day, 11.59 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on that day. Uh, if for some reason you have something that's going to prevent you uh, from turning something in on time, maybe mandatory overtime at work or mandatory week of training or a week at a conference at a job uh, that might impact you turning assignments in. You need to let me know as soon as possible so we can work out how you're either going to get those in on time or if I'm going to allow you a slight extension. Um, withdrawal policy, um, a lot of times 161 students are freshmen. Um, you may or may not know this. But up to that midterm date, you can simply go into PeopleSoft and withdraw from any of your classes. Um, after that midterm date, um, you need my permission. I will give my permission to any student that asks me to. Um, we might talk about it to make sure you're understanding everything correctly and that withdrawing from the class is really the right thing to do. But ultimately, I consider that a personal decision and if you ask me to let you drop, uh, then I will let you drop as long as that is by the last day of classes, which is the Friday before finals week. After that date, you cannot um, withdraw from the class. Here is a list of some helpful BCTC resources that you can look over and um, look at if you need to. Um, as far as free tutoring, most likely for 
our class this is going to come in two forms uh, BCTC has free CIT tutoring <coughs> that happens either on campus or virtually with tutors that have been si assigned to be general CIT tutors our class will also have an embedded tutor and that will be someone in the past has always been a student up until recently um, it's been somebody that was not a current student but they will be assigned to our class they'll be part of the class and they will be available to answer information about the class and you're free to use either whichever meets your time schedule the best uh, whichever one you have a better rapport with or that you know thinks you makes you understand the material easier it's totally up to you both of those are available and both of them are free as far as college policies and procedures there's a link uh, to that um, as far as respondent support um, you get that from within respondent so if you're taking an exam and having a problem there's a chat button that you can click and talk to somebody that works at Respondus that should be able to help you with um, whatever problem you're having. Um, remote instruction course contingency plan is really for hybrid or in-person classes. For example, if we have another pandemic or something that causes campus to close, um, it talks about how you will transition to totally online instruction. Since we're already 100% online, the statement that is here for our class is this should have no significant impact on our course delivery policies, uh, online um, content, due dates, etc. Um, you know, if something came up and there was some confusion, always, whether it's related to emergency closing or not, um, email me or hit me up in teams and I will get answers to your questions uh, a couple of years ago I saw this in another faculty members the syllabus and I liked it so I put it in all mine now which are various reporting dates uh, by Thursday January 18th that's when I have to confirm no shows that is why your no-show activity is due the day before that, January 6th, 17th. Uh, the fourth week of classes was typically when we have the first Starfish progress report. That is where for all my classes, all the students, I have to go in and choose flags like, hey, keep up the good work. You know, you're doing great. You're doing okay in the class. There's a couple of assignments you're missing or a couple of things you need to improve on or you're really far behind you might think about dropping the class um, that type of thing uh, the midterm date like i said earlier is march 4th that's when midterm grades will be posted typically the 12th week of class will be the st second starfish reports same set of flags but there will be more flags raised that are in the category you know at danger of failing and or you need to consider withdrawing from the course um, because you know we're like three quarters of the way through the semester and you know a student to get that would be very being doing very bad or more, more likely just not participating for a month or so um, and then your finals grade will be posted the Monday after finals week which is May 6th here is your tentative course schedule. Um, we should pretty much um, stay on track. I've taught this class for I don't know how many years now, so this should be pretty refined. Uh, week 8, um, notice that's when your midterm exam will occur. It will be proctored the Monday through Thursday of that week, which is February 26th through February 29th. Uh, a couple of weeks later, we have spring break. Uh, so we won't have anything due that week. 
and then your final exam is um, April 29th through May 3rd is the actual week of finals week but again notice here in the notes this will be comprehensive it will be proctored and just like the midterm it will be administered Monday through Thursday so you can fit it into your schedule and take it whenever you like um, and there are occasions where I will open these exams up a little earlier um, to give you the weekend before if you'd rather knock it out on a weekend instead of um, during the week when you might have work or something else going on. So that is a discussion of your syllabus for CIT 161. And if you have any questions about the class, uh, please hit me up in Teams or email me.